Hey Jammers, Snowy Glide here from the Animal Jam Archives, and welcome to the first chapter of Animal Jam History! In this series, we're going to be tackling everything from Jamal's craziest rumors to its most beloved stories, and probably everything in between. Today, we'll be starting out with the formation of Jamal. The beginning is a very good place to start, after all. National Geographic Kids and Smart Bomb Interactive came together on this project. Nat Geo took the funding, advertising, education, and big name credibility role, while Smart Bomb, aka AJHQ, actually put the game together. They're the ones that run Animal Jam. Smart Bomb Interactive more recently changed its name to Wildworks, but you can still see evidence of their old name in the initials scattered all over Jama. Have you seen those cocoa bean bags in Shavir Shop? Or perhaps the old wooden television? There you go! Wildworks was founded in 2003. The CEO now, Clark Stacy, was a co-founder of that original group. The team had created two large projects before Animal Jam, Pac-Man World Rally and Snoopy Flying Ace. The inspiration for the game originally came from Chris Johnson, Wildworks' studio director and co-founder. He believed the internet was in need of a game that reflected the timeless childhood fantasy of imagining to be one's favorite animal. The title Animal Jam was actually inspired from the Swahili word for friendship, Jamal. The brainstorming for Animal Jam was a long process. Designing a video game is no easy task. Clark Stacy told me that each style of video game reflects different answers to the two key questions they ask themselves when starting a new game project. One, what is the core fantasy behind the game? And two, who is the game for? At first, HHQ wasn't sure their age demographic. At one point, the target age group was in the preschool age, but Wildworks eventually felt that the core fantasy of becoming your favorite animal is something shared by kids of all ages, and adults too. Designs for the animals were in the works all through 2009, going through dozens of different styles. Some were realistic, with more true-to-life proportions, smaller eyes, normal-sized noggins. Others were cartoonish, with cutesy features more aimed for the preschool demographic. Some were even anthropomorphic, standing on two legs just like some of the alphas do. Others look almost like clay creatures, totally different than the modern AJ style. It certainly was a long procession of different designs. Sometimes they even got a bit too goofy, but slowly the art style evolved to resemble the animal characters we know today. Wildworks made the partnership with National Geographic in early 2010. Animal Jam has done so well since then that Nat Geo and Wildworks extended their agreement in 2014 to include an additional 10 years. That means Animal Jam is going to be running until 2024 and beyond. Why beyond? Because of how successful the game is! Over 36 million jammers have created over 123 million animal characters so far, and there is no end in sight. Animal Jam is played in over 225 countries around the world, despite there only being around 196, but they're likely counting territories as different countries or something. HHQ headquarters may be in Salt Lake City, Utah, but it has yet another studio office in Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands. They even have some more sites in the Philippines, I believe. On the website, they even estimate that by 2017, there will be more virtual animals in Jama than real bacteria in the ocean. <laughs> the game now has a version on mobile devices, Play Wild, as well as a growing amount of consumer products and outsourced merchandise deals. 2016 marks the year of figurines, stuffed animals, trading cards, costumes, books, comic books, and even rumors of a TV show. You can click here to view my last Animal Jam history video detailing these exciting developments. In regards to the game itself, the original AJHQ team got the game started with the help of material granted to them by National Geographic, and Nat Geo began advertising in their National Geographic Kids magazine. That's where my sister, Proven, and I heard about the game. July 27th, 2010 was supposedly the opening day for beta testing of the game. Yep, beta actually just refers to a time period. Beta testing in game development simply means the second phase of software testing. Alpha testing, the first phase, was what likely just done within the company. Beta opened the game to a small portion of the public, but compared to today, very few jammers played. Alpha testing, as seen in some of AJHQ's promotional videos about Jama, may be the source of some of the weirder pictures you may have seen floating around the Animal Jam community. Things like a monkey statue and Temple of Zeos. 
plan expert achievements, interesting grayed out icons, flat brown name tags, strangely colored items, and much more. Most of these didn't even make it to the beta testing stages, but that does not stop rumors from flying. I'll leave alpha and beta testing details for the next chapter of Animal Jam history. Be sure to subscribe to see the next segment of Jamal's story. I promise that each episode will bring some new tidbits of AJ knowledge long forgotten by even the oldest of players. Have a question about this chapter? Leave it in the comments and it may appear in my first history Q&A video. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more chapters. If you'd like to support me in this crazy project, you can visit my Patreon page. Because these types of videos take so much more research and editing than normal Animal Gym videos, your donation would be a huge help. Patrons receive some pretty snazzy sneak peeks, viewings of each chapter a few days before my other subscribers, in-game jamograms and prizes, as well as some possible parties in the future. Shout out to some of my top patrons who supported my last video, Rockabilly Kitty, Tallstar107, and Silent Ninja 8421 Until next time though, happy jamming!